The Canada Environmental Protection Act, CEPA, 1999, regulates toxic substances under the prohibition of certain toxic substances regulations. These regulations prohibit the manufacture, use, sale, offer for sale, or import of certain toxic substances. Accordingly, CEPA may modify the list of substances when required. CEPA is one of the most significant laws in Canada contributing to sustainable development. Critical sections of the Act deal with respecting pollution prevention and protecting the environment and human health. Introduction to the Prohibition of Certain Toxic Substances Regulations In essence, the Prohibition of Certain Toxic Substances Regulations, 2012, prevents the manufacture, use, sale, or import of a list of toxic substances and the products containing them. Subject to these regulations, CEPA publishes the list of substances on its registry website. An important note is that CEPA may amend these regulations periodically by adding new substances or adapting them to industry developments. These restrictions are exclusively related to PFOA, PFOS, LCPFCAs, PBDEs, and HBCD. Amendment to the Prohibition of Certain Toxic Substances Regulations under the Canada Environmental Protection Act. On December 20, 2018, CEPA published a consultation document intending to amend the prohibition of certain toxic substances regulations. In particular, the purpose of this amendment is to phase out the use of the following CEPA toxic substances. Perfluorooctanoic acid, PFOA, and its salts or precursors. Perfluorooctane sulfonate, PFOS, and its salts or precursors. Long-chain perfluorocarboxylic acids, LCPFCAs, and their salts or precursors polybrominated diphenyl ethers, PBDs, which is also a category in ROSE regulations, hexabromocyclododecane, HBCD. Furthermore, this amendment bans the manufacture, use, sale, offer for sale, and import of two additional toxic substances and products containing them, decabromodiphenyl ethane, DBDPE, and dechlorane plus, DP. These seven substances are mostly persistent, bioaccumulative, and toxic PBT, in the environment and can move long distances. Consequently, they threaten some Canadian ecosystems, including the endangered southern resident killer whale and the St. Lawrence estuary beluga. Therefore, maintaining restrictions on these substances through regulations is critical for decreasing their concentration to the lowest possible levels in the Canadian environment. Why does CEPA regulate PFAs with the prohibition of certain toxic substances regulations? PFASs are a group of human-made chemicals. They are generally resistant to oil, water, and heat. Various consumer, industrial, and commercial products contain PFAs, including insulating cables in different electrical and electronic products, solar panels, cleaning products, firefighting foams, textiles, e.g., furniture, carpets, clothes, food packaging, food processing equipment, cookware, cosmetics, etc. Three well-known PFASs are PFOA, which is part of the perfluorocarboxylic acids, PFCs, family, PFOS and LCPFCAs. Here are some of the specific harmful effects of PFASs on human health. Rising cholesterol levels. Changing enzymes in the liver. Increasing risk of kidney or testicular cancer. Raising blood pressure, especially in pregnant women, which leads to hypertension and preeclampsia disease. Reducing vaccine efficiency in children. Rising risk of thyroid disease. Therefore, the Government of Canada has prohibited these dangerous substances through various regulations, including the previously mentioned prohibition of certain toxic substances regulations, 2012. PBDEs are brominated flame retardants. There are more than 200 substances in the family of PBDEs such as tetra-BDE, penta-BDE, hexabidae, hepta-BDE, octave, Nonabda, and Decabda. Various products contain PBDEs, including electrical and electronics, furniture, building materials, automobiles and airplanes, plastics, and textiles. If a certain amount of PBDEs enter the environment, they can cause immediate or long-term adverse impacts. These chemicals can result in thyroid and liver problems not only in animals but also in humans. As a result, Many countries internationally have regulated PBDEs based on their concentrations and applications in different products. HBCD is another brominated flame retardant. 
In Canada, the application of this substance is limited to the automotive sector. However, some products made from recycled plastics may contain small amounts of HBCD. HBCD is dangerous to the environment due to its toxicity, persistence, and bioaccumulation characteristics. Consequently, this chemical has been on the substance of very high concern SVHC, list under the European REACH regulation since October 28, 2008. DBDPE is an organic flame retardant substance. In Canada, many applications use DBDPE as an additive to slow the combustion and spread of fire, such as plastic, primarily thin plastics, and rubber materials, electrical and electronic products, and adhesives and sealants. Indeed, the environmental degradation of DBDPE is slow and could produce persistent and bioaccumulative substances which are specifically very toxic to aquatic organisms. In addition, several studies have demonstrated the harmful effects of DBDPE on the liver, thyroid, reproduction, and neurons of animals. DP is an organic substance used as an additive flame retardant to slow the start or spread of fire. Many applications use this substance, such as electrical and electronics products, e.g., wire and cable coating, appliances, automotive, plastics, e.g., nylon, polyolefin heat shrink, EPDM, etc. DP may cause adverse effects on the environment due to its persistence and bioaccumulation characteristics. Hence, in January 2018, European Chemical Agency, ACHA, recognized DP as a substance of very high concern, SVHC, under the REACH regulation. Other Canadian regulations apply to products, such as the Canadian Energy Efficiency Regulations 2016, SOAR, 2016 311 Are these regulations and their amendments affecting the compliance of your products and services? Reach out to the EnviroPass team to get help and consultation for your environmental obligations.